Today I'm going to show you how to make simple fruit and vegetable garnishes. I'm going to start with the strawberry first. We're going to cut the strawberry in quarters, not all the way through to the green and pull it apart. Instead of drawing a strawberry fan, you can make a strawberry flower. This is used for plate garnish, which is quite big, or plattering. Moving on from the strawberry, we're going to make do the same design, but with a cherry tomato. So if you cut the cherry tomato into eighths, don't cut all the way into the seed bowl, because you want to use that as a whole, because that will make your effect better. When you're peeling back the petals, you just simply, sometimes they get caught, and you have to use your knife. And that is a tomato flower. That can be used for platter garnish as well. When you move to a tomato and make a wedge, another wedge, and then to take away the seed, you can either Cut a V out of the tomato and you have a garnish like that that can sit on a plate and you separate it apart or with another quarter you can make a fan and you cut lines, not all the way down evenly apart and you can fan it out and that's a tomato form. Okay that's our tomato garnishes. Now we're going to move to lemons. I'm not going to show you how to do a lemon wedge but I will show you <coughs> how to do what to do two different garnishes with half a lemon. Now this is used for platters it's a crown, so you've got the lemon, you're going to start at one end, you're going to cut a wedge into that side. Where you've started the other side, you will start the opposite, not cutting all the way through. And when you twist it up, you have a lemon crown. The next lemon garnish we're going to do for plattering is a swan. What you do is you run your knife around the edge of the lemon, twist it around, and tie the rind into a knot. You can do this with oranges as well if you like. And you have a lemon swan. Now I'll show you carrot, a carrot pinwheel. <clears throat> if you use a peeler, you can peel a thin strip of carrot, trim the edges so that they're straight and the length is even. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can do one-sided and what you do is on an angle you cut fine lines so that when you turn it around it spins out. And that's a spirit carrot pinwheel. The other pinwheel you can do is the same effect. You still need a strip of carrot. You cut the ends, the edges so that they're straight and the ends so that they're flat. And you work with both sides of the carrot. So you make fine cuts down one side. 
turn it around and do it the other way. These ones you can actually put in ice water and it will curl back. However, you don't really need to do it with some carrots like this one because they separate by themselves. one on a toothpick here it's been placed on a toothpick and that's cut both edges you can see you can fasten it together like that okay <clears throat> now we'll move to a, a pear fan this is very simple the technique in this one is to make sure you cut your pear or you can use an apple very thinly you do need a sharp knife People with less skill would probably find a serrated knife easier to use. And what you do is you pull the fan apart evenly. If there's any here like this, you just take that out. And this can be used, not as big as this you would use, this one on a platter, like a cheese platter. This. And lean it up against something. Or you could use half a fan on a dessert plate and lean that up against the dessert. Okay. Our la my last garnish I'm going to show you is an apple swan. Right. With a sharp knife you cut the side of the apple off and that becomes your base. Then we're going to start with the top. You make V incisions all the way through the apple, trying to keep it even as you cut in. So now that becomes the top of the swan. falls out that's not a problem you just pop it back in the enzymes of the t apple will hold it all in place to stop it from going brown <coughs> you can use lemon juice when you've finished however you have to be careful you don't put too much in because it will force these fine ones out these have to be light I found that if you actually use granny smith apples they will stay and pink ladies they will stay whiter for longer. They're less likely to brown than other varieties. Well, they don't brown as quick. Okay. One more. That one's come out. So this is really good for me to show you. When this does come out, and it will happen, you just build it back like a jigsaw. Put that bit back in there and that one in there. They will fall out when you're not used to doing it, when you first start. Just push them back in and they'll be fine. Now we need the neck of the swan. This is the base we cut off before. What we do is you cut a small wedge off it. Cut around the wedge so you've got the curve of the swan's neck. Using the knife tip, we're going to make a slight rounding incision so we can place the neck in. And there you have an apple swan. Now the apple swan is, a, is obviously very big so it's best for plattering garnish and it can be used, it looks really good on a big cheese board. Okay, and that concludes my garnishing. Thank you.